King fired the starter's pistol that sent 99 prize-hungry harriers padding the roads from Windsor Castle in the marathon race of 1946. It's a long, long trailer winding before they see that thin white line of winner's tape waiting to be broken 26 miles away at Chiswick. In front, after the first 10 minutes, number 25, Reading's H.S. Oliver, showed the crowd at Chiswick Stadium a sprinter's freshness. And after a two and a half hours non-stop run, Sportsman Oliver joins the week's winners. The racing roar hit Cambridge when the Auto Club speedsters burned up a wet and windy track in a race to clock the day's fastest time. Rain kept the speed down on corners and anybody in too much of a hurry took a spin. First to go was Gerard's ERA. Watching the day's best time was our Parnell in a Maserati, another winner in the gallery. Pauline Betts on the left, America's tennis number two, soon had Britain's Jean Bostock chasing the ball in our biggest Whiteman Cup beating since 1923. We didn't win a single set, and a big part of the reason why was Pauline Betts. Her rocket service and all-round strength was too much for Mrs. Bostock. The match went to America 6-2, 6-4, and the audience applauded a new winner. Mrs. K. Menzies took the next beating from America's Margaret Osborne. Her play gave a big thrill, especially to the schoolgirl section of the crowd. Mrs. Menzies, the former K. Stammers, had a bad day, and the match went to Miss Osborne 6-3, 6-2. Miss Joan Curry was Britain's brightest hope. She battled away with a three-match deficit, but couldn't hold the wonderful speed and deadly volleying of US star Louise Bruff. Taller and stronger, she took the match 8-6-6-3, with Joan Curry the day's best loser. The contest, a grim shake-up for British tennis, ended with a presentation by the Duchess of Kent to cup donor Mrs. Whiteman and America's best tennis side in years. <laughs>